Hey guys, I'm Milan with 2ProBeats and welcome to the first episode of Mixtalk. In this series, I will try and answer to the best of my abilities, to the best of my knowledge, to your questions. I will try and answer questions about mixing, about mastering, about plugins, about hardware, so about anything that has to do with audio. So if you have any questions for the next video, please leave a comment in the section below. I hope that we can make this like a monthly series or even a weekly series if you have enough questions. If you enjoy this type of video, please subscribe, hit the notification button, drop a like. If you have questions for the next one, leave a comment. Please follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook, and you can join the Facebook group called Mix Talk where you can ask your questions. I gather questions from YouTube, from Facebook, from Instagram, so use whatever you want. So let's get into the video. The first question comes from YouTube. I follow your mix tutorials very closely. Fortunately, I have all the Waves plugins used in your videos, but I do not own any of the Sound Toys plugins. How strongly would you recommend the Sound Toys bundle as an addition to the Waves plugin suite? Let's talk about the Sound Toys uh, bundle. How many plugins I use and if I think they are really worth it. From the Sound Toys bundle, I use Decapitator, I use Devil Lock, I use Echo Boy. Echo Boy Jr. not that much. The effect track is really, really nice. Nice. A little altar boy, yes. Little plate, a lot. A radiator, sometimes. A micro shift, yes. Pan man, yes. Face mistress, not that much. Rumble tap, a lot. A radiator, yes. A CAQ, sometimes. From the entire Sound Toys uh, bundle, I use most of the plugins, and that's pretty rare when you think about bundles. You have a lot of options. Echo Boy is probably one of the most used delay in my sessions. Last year I've upgraded to the full bundle for $100. They had like 50% off. They usually have this around holidays and on Black Friday I think. So if you collected a few of the little plugins over the years you will be able to upgrade for a small price when they have the sale. So that's what I recommend doing. Wait for a sale and get the plugins because they are really really worth it. I don't have any issue with them they are not cpu hungry the sound is amazing and you have a lot of control over the sound next question is uh, from ray how you can make the vocal stand out in a mix using stock plugins from studio one i will show you what plugins i think that are really great in studio one to make your vocals to stand out okay so for mixing vocals with stock plugins a really nice plugin that you should try and you should learn if you don't afford or if you don't want to invest in third-party plugins is the fat channel from studio one that's the plugin that i recommend for mixing vocals you have compression you have eq and you have a limiter what's nice about this plugin is that you have some vintage emulation the tube compressor this is similar to cla 2 way from waves then you have a fat this is similar to cla 76 you have the passive and the vintage the passive is a pull tech emulation the vintage this one i think is a neve Neve? I think it's a Neve emulation. So this is a real nice plugin to use to make your vocals to stand out. In addition to this, you really have to learn the stock plugins, the stock EQ, it's called Pro-Q, the stock compressor. This is the plugin that I recommend for mixing vocals with uh, stock plugins. The next question is about mono and stereo plugins, how you use them in uh, different situations. I think that he's talking about Waves plugins. Waves is probably one of the few companies that have different versions for mono and stereo plugins let me show you how and why i use mono or stereo plugins so like i said the company that has mono and uh, stereo versions for their plugins is uh, waves i don't know any other company that does this sometimes it's pretty confusing here's how i like to use the plugins first there's no real difference between the mono and the stereo version you should try and use mono plugins on mono tracks and stereo plugins on stereo tracks Sometimes I receive vocals for mixing in stereo, so I will have to use stereo plugins. But there is no difference between the mono and the stereo vocals. And let me show that to you. I have here a vocal from uh, Modest. As you can see, the track is in stereo. Let's take it to the Y. Come meet on as Y. In Studio One, we have this little button here called Channel Mode. When I hit this, you will see that the track now is in mono. Let's take it to the Y. Come meet on as Y. No need to be 
so no difference sound wise between the mono version and the stereo version because the vocal was recorded in mono but I think with uh, stem exporting in uh, some softwares you don't have the options to keep the tracks in mono so that's why I have a stereo file it's no issue but now let's move to the plugins when you're using waves plugins and you have to choose from a mono version or stereo version be careful for spatial plugins for example reverbs delays let's say CLA um, vocals we have a stereo version and a mono 2 stereo version so we can use the stereo version on this vocal without any problem the track is stereo so we can use the plugin with reverbs because reverb is stereo delay stereo the spreader right here the pitch which is again stereo the problem arrives when you're trying to use stereo plugins on mono tracks i have here an example this is my voice from today's video next question is from uh, so it's mono now let's see what happens when i try to use stereo plugin on a mono track and that plugin has spatial processing reverb delay next question is from uh, ray we have a mono track with a mono reverb and a mono delay you can use this as a creative effect to have your reverb and your uh, delay mono but that's uh, rarely used in uh, modern music in order to use stereo plugins on a mono track you have to send that track to a bus what i like to do is add bus for selected channel and i will hide that track so i have just uh, the bus and you can use the plugin here this is the difference next question is from uh, we have a big reverb and delay that's stereo so that's the only concern that i have when using mono or stereo plugins otherwise when it's a mono track i use mono plugins except spatial plugins when it's a stereo track i use stereo plugins and that's it next question how much time do you usually spend on mixing a single song it really depends but here's how i like to work working online so i don't have real-time input and real-time feedback from my clients because i'm not there in the room with them when i mix i like to work with drafts working with drafts allow me to take small steps in the right direction i usually start preparing the session and that is close to half an hour an hour now with studio one version 4 i just import session data so i have all my sends that really shorten the prep time for mixing after i have all my sends in the session i try listen to the song a few times while preparing and adjusting some settings for the reverbs for the delays especially for the sends so the first draft takes around two or three hours i send that draft to the client the client listens to the track he sends me his input his feedback after i receive the feedback we continue that back and forth until we have the final mix until the, the client says this is the one sometimes it takes three drafts sometimes it takes 10 drafts as an average i think three days is a really nice time period for mixing one single track next question is from uh, bernardo silva how do you record voice do you use an uh, preamplifier or just the audio interface i'm not a recording engineer but in my experience in working with uh, artists that record in a home studio i would recommend recording as clean as possible so that means going from the microphone straight into the interface without any preamps without any knobs to tweak because you can really hurt the recording and you cannot undo the process I recommend recording very clean straight from the microphone into the interface. I record my vocals, what you are hearing right now, from the microphone straight into my interface, but I have some slight compression and some slight EQ. This is like voiceover for recording artists, I will not print the compression and uh, the EQ. A nice way to get a nice sound for the artist is to use effects just for monitoring. So that means you're using reverb, you're using EQ, compression and things like that, and you print the track clean. Louis asked about the plugins I've been using lately and uh, what plugins do I like. I will show you my recent folder and my favorite folder and the plugins that I've been using in most of my session and mixing. I haven't updated the favorite folder in a while so it's not reflecting my workflow and what plugins I usually use in recent times. Just to name a few, I use the BX Digital EQ, C6, sometimes C4, CLA76, Decapitator, Echo Boy, my favorite delay, F six from waves dynamic eq that i use h delay sometimes but not that often h reverb i have it as a send in uh, most of my session as you can see let's see if we have it 
in this session yes you can see it right here then i have a psp that i use sometimes fed presser this is a 1176 emulation chef's omni channel sometimes i use this seven heaven professional in most of my session shaper box this is a cool plugin for effects tape stops for filters for panning and other rhythmic effect an ssl bus compressor i don't use this anymore uh, now i have the cream the hardware that's what i'm using at the moment Stereo Savage, yeah, sometimes I use this or the Waves uh, S1 tape from Softube, I use this. Nova sometimes in uh, mixing or mastering. Sleek EQ, Tokyo Don Lab. Uh, sometimes I use this one, not that often. The Glue was my favorite to bus compressor. Vintage Verb on every session. The VLA 2A and VLA 3A, sometimes not that often. I uh, I think I use uh, more the, the Waves 1. Recently I've purchased uh, this this plugin console E from uh, Brainworks. This is what I use most of the time on every single channel. We have uh, filters, we have an EQ, compressor, we have saturation, a gate, an expander. I like the, the workflow and I really think that it sounds uh, really nice. Let's see what else I have in this session. Stereo Delta, this is a plugin that I use very often, especially on Sends. Primal Tap, I really enjoy it. What else? For pitch correction, Autotune Pro. This is what I use most of the time. I forgot to mention my most used EQ is uh, Pro Q2 from Fab Filter, Arvox Classic, Waves DSers Classic again, C6, Panman. This is what I use for pan automation. Other plugins that I use, Plugin Alliance, uh, Maggie Q2 on vocals sometimes. I have in every single session Suit and Spiff from Oak Sound. Dr. MS, I use reference from Mastering the Mix as my reference tool. Clank Helm, yeah, sometimes. Uh, Isotope again, I use them a lot, especially Ozone 8. And I think these are my most used uh, plugins. Another question about uh, recording is how many sample rates do you have a good monitoring through the headphones without delay? I think you are trying to ask about the buffer size. When mixing, I keep the buffer size around 1000 samples, but when recording, you have to keep the, the buffer size under 500. A nice thing about some audio interface is that they have direct monitoring. That means that the audio is not going through the PC and coming back, so you don't get any latency. That's a huge improvement if you're trying to record. Alex asks about mid-side processing during mixing. So for mid-side processing, I have two techniques that I use most of the time. Mid-side EQing, dynamic or regular EQ, and I use center from waves. When I have to deal with uh, two track beats, you can reduce the center to make room for the vocal. Let's take a and you can push the lows in the center. So you will not have sub bass information on the sides. You can push the highs on the sides and you can push the punch in the middle. can increase the, the stereo depth and I use mid-side processing with EQs and I like FabFilter Pro Q2 you have channel mode mid-side I use it on pads I use it on all sorts of instruments when I try to make room for the vocal because vocals are the the main instruments in a mix so you have to make room for that when making room for vocals using this technique basically I'm uh, cutting some frequencies just from the mid this is one way I'm using the mid-side EQ. Another way is to increase the, the stereo image and that means that you can boost just the sides. Another question is from uh, Stone City. The question is about levels and how I set my levels. And I will show you that right now. I get this question a lot, how to set levels. And there's no right answer. This is how I like to do it. I like to start with every single fader down. My thought process, I already listened to the track when uh, prepping the session, so I know everything about the track. Then I pick the three most important things that will probably be the loudest in the track. Kick, snare, and vocals. I start the levels with kick, snare and vocals aiming to not go above 
minus 6 dB on the, the Studio One meter. That's how I know that I have enough headroom for mastering and for processing when mixing. So that's how I set levels. I will probably do a more in-depth video about how I start mixing with a full track out, how I set the, the levels and all that nice stuff. So stay tuned for that. Another question about recording is what plugins do I recommend using for recording, for printing those plugins into the recording. I don't recommend recording with plugins. I do recommend monitoring with plugins, but do not record with plugins. Do it if you are absolutely sure that you have the perfect sound for a mix. Rick Rodriguez likes to know how to parallel compress. This is how I parallel compress in Studio One. So about parallel compression, how you set up things in Studio One. Let's say you want to add a compressor in parallel for the hook main voice you can add an effects channel I use bus channels because of the raw thing in studio one I always uh, make it solo safe shift click you can use any plugins you, you want I like uh, using the CLA 76 fast release medium to slow attack all in buttons push the input reduce the output and now send to parallel compressor Let's take it to the Y. Come me, don't ask why. No need to be shy. Tell your ex goodbye. No he's stuck on your phone. And you can adjust the amount of gain reduction by driving the input. Oh, he didn't treat you right. He only took you home. For my parallel compressor, I like to hit it pretty hard, so I push the input at extreme settings and then I set up a level that I really think is the proper level to blend the compressed signal with the original vocal sound. But I'm gonna take it to Hawaii. Let's take it to the Hawaii. Come with me, don't ask why. With the parallel compressor, I'm not trying to make it that obvious. I'm just adding a very consistent layer underneath the main lead vocal. And that's how you set up the parallel compressor in Studio One. And these are all the questions for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please subscribe. Follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Facebook. Join our Facebook group. It's called Mix Talk. Don't forget to hit that notification button to stay up to date with my videos. I post three times a week. If you have questions for the next episode of Mix Talk, leave a comment, hit me up on, uh, on the Facebook group, hit me up on uh, Instagram. See you guys next time. Cheers.